nothing like a quiet morning in the museum. Yeah, I, I know, it's a grocery store, but where else can you go to catch a better glimpse of the span of human experience, of the evolution of science and technology, not to mention the fine art of advertising? What does it say to you? But with all good museums, there is much to see, do, and learn here. And the entire place is a gift shop, which is kind of nice. Now, here we have my favorite display, the spices, and my favorite item, a food that is utterly unique in every way. That's right, salt. The always eloquent food writer, Margaret Visser, wrote, salt is the only rock directly consumed by man. It corrodes but preserves. It desiccates but is rested from the water. It has fascinated man for thousands of years, not only as a substance he prized, but as a generator of mythic and of legendary meaning. Its contradictions only intensify its power and its links with the experience of the sacred. Nice. Besides that, without salt, there would be no beef jerky, soda pop, uh, spaghetti sauce, canned soup, potato chips, chocolate sauce, uh, donuts, dog food, cheese, bologna, peanut butter, ham, ketchup, athletic drinks, bread, pickles, olives, anchovies, capers. And just imagine what pretzels would taste like without this. You know, without salt, there would be absolutely, positively, no. <laughs> A few billion years ago, many dry and salty seabeds went underground, which is exactly what happened here in Redmond, Utah, where a thin, thin layer of clay barely concealed a 1,200-foot deep, one-mile-wide hunk of halite, that's rock salt, which got turned up on end sometime during the uh, late Jurassic period. Now, uh, unlike most mines, which are usually dark, dangerous, dingy, wet, smelly, not to mention claustrophobic places. This mine, which has been overseen by the uh, Bouchot family for the better part of 50 years, is exactly the opposite. It features a nice, big, wide, scenic drive-through. <laughs> Everything that you see here, the floor, the walls, Everything is salt. And if it doesn't exactly look like the uh, salt in your salt cellar at home, well, there's a few good reasons. For one, we're in a really dark hole in the ground. For two, there's uh, dust on everything. And three, well, this salt is shot through with trace minerals, almost like, uh, well, fruit in a jello mold. What's the significance of this? What do I look like, a salt miner? Oh, here comes one now, though. <laughs> If you think this is big, you should check out the mines in Maleska, Poland. Through the centuries, the workers who spent a lot of time down there did things like carve statues out of salt. They even carved whole rooms out of salt, including several chapels and a grand ballroom that you can rent out for weddings and family reunions and the like. This is Kyle. Kyle is the mine supervisor here. He's been working in this mine for uh, how long? About 15 years. So, Kyle, I found this uh, down on the floor down there, and I was thinking of uh, just uh, grinding it up and putting it on my steak. What do you think? I guess you could, but that isn't a very good example of what we would select for food grade. Why? Um, our salt has over 30 different trace minerals in it. Right. This, it this example right here has too high a concentration. So some trace minerals taste good, and too much gets just bad. So what would you use this for? This would go for de-icing or livestock. De-icing. So I can make That's this right. into a salt lick or I can melt the snow on my driveway. Well, great. This is a good example of what we would select as food grade. It's kind of rosy looking. I mean, it's not clear. Um, so those are the minerals? It still has over 30 trace minerals. It's just not as heavily concentrated in there. So um, this is a, a big, 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 big place. What percentage of the salt that you pull out of here is uh, actually usable for food? About 1%. 1%. These really bright white bands here, that's the, the good stuff? I mean, that's like what you got in your hand right there? That's correct. Okay, so somebody's going to blow up the whole wall, and uh, then somebody will pick out just that part. Actually, there are a lot of leads to uh, mine rock salt, depending on the formation you're blasting. You might use a really big saw to 
In the dust layers, you can just haul the chunks away. But some operations break the salt down to gravel size before hauling it up to the surface. Um, since our mine is a drive-thru, though, as long as the pieces aren't too big to get in the truck, we don't really break them down any further. I guess it's been, what, 15 years that I've been using real salt. It's what I want when I want the flavor of salt. Resin real salt, natural product that enhances the flavor of fine foods. Most of the salt has a lot of chemicals in it. It's treated. Uh, this is all natural, so, so you really get the strong salt, you know, the strong uh, salt flavor. Because real salt is, is real salt. That's all I can say. <laughs> real salt, available at fine grocery stores everywhere. If you want the real flavor of salt, you better get the real Magillo. This comes out of a mine in southern Utah, and it's in my kitchen. Salt is in the soup. It's ready because it's natural, and I just use that little touch. Real salt goes in my soup every time. Hi, we're in Peterson's Market in Riverton today, and we're doing real salt taste test. Tasted like maybe it was more natural. I like that one. I might even eat a plane. Wow. Redmond Real Salt, available at fine grocery stores everywhere.